while the commissioners are quite confident that U.S.-Japan alliance is going to continue well into the future, and we want to do what we can to advise both governments, both Japan and the United States, on what changes to make, what modernizations for the alliance we might suggest. Uh, and uh, what better time than now? New leadership in Japan. We'll be having an election before too long ourselves. Uh, it's, it's time to really reinvigorate our relationship in a way that makes us more agile, more mobile, and hopefully in a way that's less burdensome to the people of Japan. Well, uh, this third uh, meeting built on the papers and the discussions of the first two, and it kind of gives us a snapshot of where we are right now and what we need to drive towards in the future. Uh, clearly with the activities of, of China and the South China Sea and the East China Sea, uh, with the uh, dynamic leadership of uh, Prime Minister Abe, uh, with the recent visit of President Obama uh, here in April, uh, where he supported defense reforms of uh, Mr. Abe, uh, we felt this was a perfect time uh, to issue this interim report, and we'll make it very clear uh, that uh, a year from now, or approximately a year from now, we'll be putting out a final report uh, which will be very forward-looking and maybe even a little provocative. Not provocative against China, but it, I think will challenge uh, the conventional wisdom of, uh, in the U.S. and in, in Japan about how we move forward. Well, Dr. Nye and I have commissioned three reports, yes. three Armitage Nye reports, and one of the things that we always noted was that there wasn't a companion uh, organization uh, in Japan who could help chart Japan's way. We, we commissioned our studies uh, to give U.S. policymakers a uh, map, if you will, of how to move forward, and we always hoped that Japan would come up with their own map and then we could talk about it. In effect, that's what we're doing now with Sasekawa Peace Foundation. The Japanese experts are putting their ideas on their map together with the United States, and clearly the product is going to be something that makes us both proud. Well, there's just a lot of hard work that has to be done, but the two major issues, I think, of what is our vision, shared vision, for East Asia as we move out to 15 years from now, 2030. And the second, and equally important, is how are we going to modernize and make more agile our alliance in order to cope with the challenges and the opportunities as we move forward. If you think 15 years ago, we were in the late 90s. It's not so long ago. Uh, so we look to 15 years in the future. There's nothing magic about it, uh, but we felt that if we wanted to be realistic and we wanted to uh, have an audience uh, sort of accept what we're saying, we couldn't look so far into the future that nobody could see. So 15 years is a pretty good time frame, uh, and uh, I think it gives us a reasonable opportunity of making pretty good predictions. Well, as I say, one of the, one of the uh, shortcomings, if I might say that in Japan, has been uh, the fact that you don't have the same kind of think tanks, as many as the United States has. And so I think the Sasakawa Peace Foundation is acting as almost a laboratory to have new thoughts and new ideas put forward uh, in support of our relationship, and I think it's terrific. I have a message of thanks for their interest in U.S.-Japan relations, so I'm very enthusiastic about it. And my hope is that out of our deliberations, when a year from now we put forward our ideas, I'm hopeful that a lot of young Japanese, younger Japanese, will really get enthusiastic about this relationship, enthusiastic about Japan's place in Asia and uh, Japan and the United States' ability to cooperate together. Mm -hmm.